This week we'll look at how to add text to your skew tees for things like heights and how to position that text exactly where you want it. Welcome to another MetPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to look at the SKU T, which we've looked at quite a bit in the past, but we had a great support question on how can we put heights on the plot. And there are a couple of ways to do it. The first way I actually kind of prefer the look of, but the second way is a little bit more traditional, though a little bit more complex. So let's get started, and the first thing that we always need in Python are imports. So from date time, we're going to import the date time object. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. From metpy.plots, I'm going to import the skew t object. And from metpy.units, we're going to import the unit registry, which is called units and the pandas data frame to unit arrays. Notice I just used tab there because that is quite a bit to type. All right, and then from siphon dot simple web service dot Wyoming, we're going to import Wyoming upper air. Again, using tab completion to save myself some typing. So we've had past videos on how to use the simple web service and how to make basic skew T's. So I'm not going to focus too much on that other than we're going to use it. But if those topics are new to you, I encourage you to definitely go back and check out some of the earlier MetPy Monday videos. Now you might see some warnings and that's okay for now. So now we need to set up where and when we would like our sounding to be from. So I'm going to set a date time called date, and I'm just going to use the release date of the video. And for the station, we're going to use OUN or Norman, Oklahoma. The data frame is what we're going to get back, and we normally call that DF, and that's coming from Wyoming Upper Air. Dot request data. If we shift tab to remind ourselves of how this function signature looks, we see that it takes a time and then a site ID. So our time is going to be the variable date and our site ID is going to be the variable station. So that goes off to the internet and gets our data. Again, you'll see a warning, but that's okay. If you're not sure exactly what the difference between warnings and errors are, we do have a MetPy Monday video that talks about warnings and what you should worry about and what you shouldn't worry about. In this case, it's just saying that pandas is not liking the way that something has to happen, but that's okay. It's what we have to do to get the upper air data currently. If we look at the head of this data frame to see what's in there, we got latitude, longitude, time, station number, station, wind components, all the standard meteorological variables, and of course, height, which is what I'm going to focus on for this video. We need united arrays instead of a data frame. So I'm going to call those united arrays D instead of DF since it's not a data frame anymore. And I'm going to use the pandas data frame to unit arrays. Now the reason this works is because we attach the units as a dictionary onto the data frame, which is actually one of the things that pandas is not liking. And this goes ahead and turns that into united arrays instead of a full-on data frame. So now that we've got our data, which is always half the battle, we're ready to start plotting. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a figure. And I'm going to even specify a fig size, in this case, of 9 by 9. And we're going to create our skew t object called skew which is done with passing the fig to the skew t. So there we have our blank skew t. So let's go ahead and add to this skew.plot 
pressure, again, using tab completion to help me, temperature, and for the color on that, I'm going to use tab red. We'll go ahead and plot dew point as well. So pressure. Dew point, and that is going to be in tab green. So, so far, this is just a relatively standard skew T. In fact, we could go ahead and even add our barbs with plot barbs. Again, pressure, U wind, and V wind. We'll add our special lines of plot dry adiabats, plot moist adiabats, and plotting mixing lines. So again, the wonderful thing about MetPy, we have a complete sounding with relatively little effort there. We don't have that many lines of code. But what I want to do is take the heights data and add it to this plot. Now, one way that I kind of like the look of is actually putting it right by where the data points are and following the temperature line. Now, if you're going to plot a parcel path and do some shading, that look may not be the best for your plot. But let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to say 4 P T H for pressure, temperature, height in zip. And then I'm going to zip together my pressure data, my temperature data, and my height data. Skew.ax to get to the axis object that's under the skew t. Then we'll use matplotlib's text. We give it the x position, which remember, normally MetPy is handling the fact that pressure is the independent variable and comes first. But now we're using plain matplotlib. It's not going to handle that for us. So we need to put what's actually on the x-axis of the plot, which is temperature, and then pressure, and then the text that we would like. So I'm going to say round heights to zero places. Let's try that and see what we get. Okay, that might not be exactly what we want. We've got heights trailing way off the top of our plot. They all say meter after them. At least they're in the right position on the plot. But that's probably not quite what we had in mind. So to get rid of those extra points, I'm just going to add a conditional in here. There are several ways that you could do this. So to do that, I'm going to say if P is greater than or equal to 100 hectopascal, so units.hpa, then we want to do the text plotting. And now we have it cut off where we want it, but we're still having a lot of extra data in here that we can't really utilize because it's on top of each other. So we need to decimate this. So I'm going to use a decimate factor. Three would probably be a pretty good number. And then we're going to create a slice on each of these so we get every third data point. And that looks quite a bit more usable. We could go ahead and get rid of the meter at the end by using .m for magnitude to drop the units. And now we just have units of meters. Uh, we could also, of course, make it kilometers or whatever we want just by doing some simple math. Now, as I mentioned, I like the look of this plot, but I know a lot of folks would prefer it to be, let's say, over here on the right-hand side of the plot. And there is a way to do this, and I'm not going to say that it is necessarily that intuitive right now, but it is quite possible using axis transforms. So we're going to replace T with 1.08, which should immediately clue you in that this is an axis relative transform. In other words, with zero being the left, one being the right, we want to go a little bit to the right of the right side of the axis. The Y is going to be the same. We'll leave what we're putting on there as text the same. So the transform 
is going to be equal to skew.x to get at the axis object. We're going to get the y-axis transform. And then we need to specify which, in this case, is going to be tick 2. Again, not necessarily the most straightforward addition, but what this is really going to do is just say we are using axis relative transforms here for one position. We're still going to use real data over here on the Y, but we're only going to use the axis relative on the X. So now if we run that code, there we see our heights over here to the right side of the plot. You could of course play, play with this number a little bit to adjust if you want them a little closer in or a little further out. But that is how you can fake out putting your heights on the right side of the plot. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.